Hello everybody, I'm happy to see you again on my channel and today I would like to speak about OSPF areas and OSPF road types. So let's get started. First things first and let's start from the definition. OSPF area is the logical grouping of routers or to be more specific is the logical grouping of router interfaces. Configuration of the area membership is set at the interface level. If you can capture uh, hello OSPF hello packet on the on the link between routers, you can find out that each OSPF hello packet includes area ID. Interface on the router can belong to only one OSPF area. All routers within the same OSPF area maintain identical LSDB. Using one OSPF area is simple for for configuring, for maintaining, but it grows in size when network links and the number of routers increase, and there are few disadvantages in uh, of using single area. First one is if a link flops within the area, it triggers full shortest pass first three algorithm to run. Second one, LSDB increases in size, consuming more memory and becomes unmanageable. Third one. SPF calculation takes longer. The, the, more, uh, the more routers and the links we have in our OSPF area, the longer it takes to calculate SPF. And uh, there is no route summarization occurs. To address mentioned issues, we need to properly design our network by segmenting it into multiple OSPF areas. When a router has interfaces in different areas, it also has multiple LSDBs, uh, one LSDB for one for each area. The internal topology of the area is not visible from the outside of that area. If there is a topology change within the area, all routers in the same OSPF area perform SPF tree calculation again. But routers outside that OSPF area perform a partial SPF calculation in case the metrics have changed or the prefix is removed. Networks from one OSPF area can be visible in other areas within the same OSPF domain. If a router is connected to two different areas, it doesn't mean that routers from one area will be injected into another area. For example, on this, um, net, in this network, we have three routers and we have two areas between them, area 1 and area 2. Um, the router R1 has interfaces in two areas, but uh, routers, uh, routes from area 2 cannot be injected into area 1 and uh, routes from area 1 cannot be injected into area 2. To make this happen, network design needs to have the backbone area or area 0. OSPF expects all areas to be connected to area 0 to inject routing information and area 0 advertises routes into other areas. The backbone design is important to, uh, for routing loop prevention. Area border router or ABR is an OSPF router which is connected to OSPF area 0 and another OSPF area or multiple OSPF areas. ABRs are responsible for advertising routes from one, one area and injecting them into another OSPF area. ABRs compute an SPF tree for every area they participate in. Every IBR needs to participate in area 0 for routes to be advertised into another area. For example, in our network we have router R1, uh, which is um, ABR in our network and because it, it has links or interfaces in area 1, area 2 and also in area 0. Uh, for routes to be injected from area 1 to area 2, they need to go first into area 0. And then area 0, from area 0 through ABR, they are injected into area 2. And vice versa, uh, routes from area 2 to be injected to area 1, they need to go to area 0. And then from area 0, they, goes to, they go to area 1. And routes from Area 0 also can be injected to both areas, area 1 and area 2. Area ID is a 32-bit field and it can be formatted in simple decimal from 0 to 
this big number or dotted decimal from 0, 0, 0, 0 to 255, 255, 255, 255. During configuration, or area ID can be in decimal format on one router and in dotted format on another router, and they still can communicate and form adjacency. In the OSPF Hello Packets, area ID is advertised in dotted decimal format. Intra-area routes. Intra-area routes are network routes that are learned within the same OSPF area. Intra-area routes are displayed in the IP routing table with uh, letter O. So all routes within this area, 1, 2, 3, 4, for example, uh, they are intra-area routes. Let's see it on example. For example, I'm going to use uh, this network where we have six routers. Uh, routers R1, R3, R4. Two and G01 interface on router R4 are in area 1, 2, 3, 4. G00 interfaces on R4 and R5 are in area 0 and G00 on R6 and G01 on R5 are in area 56. So let's see what we have on router R1. Show IP route um, OSPF. And here we have intra-area road to network 10.24.0.0, which is this network between routers R2 and R4. Let's see. Show, show IP interface brief. As you can see, we have this network here. So these routers and these networks R1, R3, R4, and interface 01 on R4 are in in the same areas, in the same area, and um, this route, uh, 10, uh, to, uh, route to network 10.24.0.2 is intra-area route for router R1. Inter-area routes are routes that are learned from other routers from a different area using ABR. Inter-area routes are displayed with O and IA in the IP routing table. For example, router R4 is the, uh, is the ABR. And for this area, area 0, routes from area A, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4 are going to be inter-area routes. So let's see it in example. Same network we have for this example, and let's see what we have. Show IP interface, uh, show IP route, OSPF. And here we can see that intra area routes O, o and I A, uh, which is networks 104500 and 105600 are inter area roads. Uh, these roads are here we have on the link between R6 and R5 and on the link R4, R5. Uh, what else interesting I want to show? Show IP protocols. Router R4 is ABR router because uh, on link G0, on interface G01 it has um, area 1234 and on interface G00 it has area 0. And here we can see that it is an area border router. Same thing for R5 which is also area border router. We can see it in this in the output of this command. It is an area border router. And the last type of the routes in OSPF domain is external routes. External routes are routes that are learned from the outside of the OSPF domain and injected into 
the OSPF domain through redistribution. External routes are usually coming from different OSPF domain or from a different routing protocol. Thank you very much for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel with the notification bell on and show your support by hitting like button. I hope to see you soon in my next videos. But for now, just goodbye and see you soon.